All right, I'm gonna do a little driving vlog because uh, some of my uh, subscribers like that kind. So, get you stepped up on the uh, dash there. Might be a little shaky. We're in the tight tone. Super early. Can't get it. Well, I can. I got keys, but uh, we're not. We'll just do a little drive. But anyway, uh, going to uh, the lot. Check it out. See what's going on. So I put some gas in the truck and loaded all the uh, stuff in here. Clear, thinner, paper, tape. I think I need tape. I need to get my tape Friday. But anyway, we'll go see what's happened. What's crackalacking. And uh, I got some uh, door moldings to pop on. And if nothing's going on there, we'll go back to the house and uh, Put the Cadrons and uh, the 1776 in the bus, get that done. Got the flywheel seal for that this weekend and uh, picked up some new fuel line and some other stuff like that. And uh, yeah, that's a Ford there, boy, going down the road, waiting to break down. But anyway, uh, yeah, not a whole lot happening, well, a whole lot. I got more shit than one asshole can handle. But, uh, that always seems to be the thing with me. So anyway, uh, been feeling like, uh, not really good lately. Some of the guys noticed the videos aren't quite the same. So, uh, I'm just trying to pump them out for you, you know? I'm trying to do it day to day. And, uh, yeah, I'll try not to take any of the pain medicine, so uh, probably being hard-headed with myself. Probably should just uh, load up on that in the morning, and I would feel a lot better. And uh, I've been up since 3 today. Got the uh, thoracic kicking, and the neck's kicking. It's all kicking. So the weather's been crazy lately, so every screw hurts. And there's a lot of screws in there, so... I did get to talk to one of my buddies. He's got uh, stage four cancer. He's got a tumor on his uh, spine. And uh, he's got some of the same issues I have with uh, his uh, disc deteriorating. And uh, he was uh, stage four. They won't operate on you, you know. So they just let you uh, try to keep you comfortable. And he got in a study. I'd mentioned that I was in a government uh, study. It's not a government study. It's a, uh, actually it's an FTA study. So I guess it is a government study. But my buddy got in a study too, and uh, they were man they managed to shrink his tumor 70 percent, and uh, he's doing really good. But uh, he he's got some of the same meds they want me to take, and uh, he's functioning on it. And uh, he takes 60 milligrams which is a high dose. The most I've ever taken is 15 milligrams. So, uh, but it makes it sort of hard to drive, you know? You get an accident and you're taking that stuff or something happens or I'm driving a kid somewhere or whatever. So that's why I have to limit it to at night, you know, I try to take it. But uh, then it makes you sick and there's a bunch of stuff that goes along with it. But anyway, Trying to get the Volkswagen stuff uh, back going because that seems to be what people like to watch, you know, the motor stuff, the training builds, the stuff like that. And I just got to clear the deck, get some uh, body work done, paint work done. Christmas is coming, so I have to go to the car a lot and do that deal. So, you know, there's uh, petty cash, and you now what they call it, you know, some sort of money coming in. And uh, not a lot of people buying houses. Uh, right now so and the paint paint business is sort of slow so so there's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff going on a lot of reasons why I push myself every day a lot of people say she just uh, give it a break you know the doctor he uh, gave me an analogy you know the parts are for uh, limited use only that they put in replacement parts you know and uh, I try to use them like it's a, a normal part and uh, it doesn't work out very well. And then when you go back to the doctor and bitch, you know it's because you didn't do what the doctor told you to do. 
but uh, what are you going to do? It's like drinking water in Mexico and then getting pissed off because you get a stomach ache. But uh, I'm dealing with it. And, uh, I got everything all sanded for the uh, lily, for the bug. A couple guys said that that's a unicorn or a pain in the ass job or it's cursed or whatever. Whatever the case might be. The shop that wrote the estimate for that didn't want to repair the car. That gives you any, any indication of, uh, you know, the shape the car was in. Should have been junked. But uh, it had sentimental value to the person, and uh, I'm a soft hearted person, and I did the job. You know, probably uh, shouldn't have done it because I don't think they're even going to keep the car. I think they'll sell that. And uh, I'll never have a car that nice. But, uh, Maybe one day, if I get rid of like, all this uh, stuff, and I uh, can work on some different projects, you know what I mean? We can work on more stuff like that. But as far as doing a car like that for somebody, man, that's just crazy. It uh, started out as an insurance job, turned into a full on restoration. And uh, in insurance jobs, usually you got a cycle time on it, you know, there's so many days. For every five hours repair time is one day. So if you have 42 hours repair time on an estimate, you know, that gives you a, you know, a week, week and a half to get the car done. Pay time labor would be extra, of course, but that's how it sort of goes. Five hours equals one day of rent a car in the insurance estimate world. And uh, insurance jobs, you know, I love doing that kind of stuff, but. Uh, I'm not a body shop, so the only time I get an insurance job is from an insurance adjuster that I've worked with in the past at body shops. And uh, it's usually when a body shop doesn't want to fix the car or you know, they don't have somebody there that can uh, do that deep of a job. But anyway, hopefully the color will match. I got a, little, I got a quart of color left over. I'm going to make another uh, quart of paint to base everything then I'll do a drop coat with the paint that I did the shell with so I should be good and uh, hopefully they like that color because that's what color it's going to be and uh, we'll get that all bolted together and get that out of there and that'll open up a big spot. I got the bus moved back inside last night in the race car. They got rained on for uh, three days, four days, I don't know. So next is Chip's bus. We'll take a little time off, get his motor uh, put back together, pop that in there. Get that running and uh, get that back to him. Apparently he didn't go to Bug Jam. I lied to you guys, told you that he was going to go over there and then he decided not to go. So uh, he still has that car. And uh, that's a uh, uh, 1600 that we built on YouTube. I saw a YouTube video yesterday, and uh, the guy's machine shop, I'm subscribed to him. He does quite a bit of videos. Yeah, he just seems like a fairly good guy, but uh, he was way off on his information on his uh, last video that he made. He uh, had a Volkswagen crank that he removed the flywheel off of, and uh, he claimed that the guy had been watching YouTube videos on how to build Volkswagen motors, and uh, that there weren't any videos out there that explained how to put the rod bearings in. So uh, I went back and watched some of my old videos. It got 20,000, 30,000 views on them. Thank you guys for watching those, by the way. With only one thumbs down on those, with 142 comments on a couple of them. So uh, I really appreciate that kind of feedback, you know. Uh, the Volkswagen videos that I put up, they're pretty solid, you know, uh, when it comes to Volkswagen stuff, I'm not going to steer you too wrong on that, but uh, he claimed that there was nobody on YouTube that taught anybody how to actually put a rod bearing in the rod, so I had to go back and watch my videos on how to build a 1600, and yep, I'll show you how to put the rod bearing in, how to line the tangs up, how the bumps should be on the rods or the slot, you know, and uh, the videos are pretty detailed, so... Uh, that was some bad information there. So, anytime I see like uh, you know really bad information, like the guy said, there's no videos on YouTube that show you how to correctly build a 1600 or a Volkswagen motor. So I was like, wait a minute, let me go uh, check my videos to make sure that I'm not a complete idiot. And, uh, 
those are the videos that people like, uh, you know, go figure, BW Darren, I don't know. I like the paint stuff, the paint stuff sort of pays the bills, you know, usually. Volkswagen stuff sort of uh, more labor of love type deal. Uh, you don't make any money doing Volkswagen stuff, you just don't. Uh, the parts, the parts guys make phenomenal money. Uh, the crap that they get from China now is so shitty that uh, they only buy stuff that they can make maximum profit margin on. So it leaves the builder with nothing but chaos, you know. You have to make sure everything's right and fits. And there's a lot of stuff to it now. Where in the old days, anybody could just throw a motor together and have good luck because the quality of part was so much better. But, uh, yeah, a little shot here for Doug. Lakeside Rancher. Here you go, buddy. Should be back in the boat in here and going fishing today. Yeah, I do on some fishing videos like John Marks. Uh-huh. That's what I should be doing. Anyway, I'm not. I'm going to the car lot. Mm-hmm. Anyway, this vlog's getting long, long, long. I just wanted to uh, clear that up. I did go recheck my videos to make sure that I did properly put the bearings and stuff in there and all that stuff. And uh I don't usually make a video of it's uh, bullshit, you know, sometimes we do stuff different, you know, in the body shop side, uh, the body business, there's a lot of uh, different ways to do stuff, old school, new school, uh, you know, so there's always some, uh, you know, lack of communication there, or, you know, you're a hack, I'm not a hack, this guy's a hack, that kind of stuff. But when it comes to the Volkswagen stuff, it's sort of plain and simple. And uh, I always like to say, you know, if you like to talk too much shit, just bring it to the track and let's light those scoreboards up and see what happens. So, uh, you know, ET slips don't lie. And uh, that's horsepower. You can either make it or you can't make it, you know what I mean? And uh, you can make so much horsepower with parts that you can buy in magazines and then you have to step out of that realm and get into the high dollar end of it. And uh, I don't have any customers at all currently. They're at a high dollar end of uh, Volkswagens, you know, it's just not out there. Uh, I've had a couple friends growing up when I worked for Scooter that had uh, $10,000 was uh, not hard to spend on a Volkswagen motor, you know. You spend $2,700, three grand on a set of heads, and uh, you know, buy you a $1,500 crank, a set of $800 Corella rods, uh, and, you know, a brand new engine case, and then full fluid, and some lines, and some 48 Webers, and some Berg manifolds, and some Berg linkage. And you're up there, buddy, 10, 12 grand all day long. And, uh, those customers sort of went away. What they did was they just made the motors bigger. Uh, now you know you just build a 86 by 94, and uh, it's pretty easy to produce 200 horsepower. Those parts don't live very long at that uh, horsepower number. But uh, yeah, so I don't know how we got on this discussion. I'm sort of just rambling on. But uh, some guys compare apple to oranges, and. Uh, I try not to confuse you. I try to make the videos as simple as possible. Because uh, I'm pretty simple. But I had good teachers, you know. I had the, uh, the fortune. Well, fortune, yeah. That's a fortune to me. It was a misfortune to my parents. Hated it. Uh, you know, almost all my brothers and sisters went to college. My dad, my stepdad was a uh, senior vice president of a bank. And uh, architect both of those things go figure that he was a very smart man and uh i was very confusing to my stepfather and my mom's a pretty smart lady you know she worked in the banking business and i was the the car nut you know and i don't know how the car bug got me you know it started i got the volkswagen bug uh I used to have a Dodson 510, and I would do burnouts in front of Scooter Shop there, you know, and uh, finally he nailed me down, and I ended up going to work for him, and I worked there for 15 years, and uh, I missed one day in 15 years, so, and I paid attention when I worked there, uh, 
you know, it was a lot of uh, having my shit checked for about three or four years. Everything I would do, you come back and check, you know, everything that I touched. And, uh, you know, I had studied to be an auto body man in uh, high school and took one year of trade school at Mid Florida Tech. And then uh, I met Scooter and sort of fell off the, the auto body path. But uh, that's why I have the experience with both. But, uh, and you know, not only Scooter, I uh, worked for Scooter for 15 years and uh, got into the paint business when uh, Scooter's uh, paychecks would no longer support my family or my lifestyle. So, uh, you know, you have to make the decision. Sometimes we leave the things we love to, uh, <clears throat> you know, get the income to support the things that we love. <laughs> and uh, that was the case with Scooter. I mean, it was uh, clearly a money issue. Is why I got into doing body work. And I got into doing body work because of Scooter, you know. He knew somebody that worked at a dealership, and uh, we talked about the money situation, and he was nice enough to uh, get me into a dealership. And uh, I was nice enough uh, of his friends to train me and bring me up to speed the body shop business, where I did that for 20 years. And then, uh, you know, I had my accident and sort of retired from that. But uh, in between the uh, scooter thing and the body shop thing, I was uh, fortunate again to get an opportunity to go race alcohol funny cars. And uh, the first person I worked for was a Division II uh, UNHRA race. You know, they have different divisions around the country. Division II champ. And uh, that was Terry Mullins, and uh, I got a chance to work with him through a friend. And uh, it was me, and uh, John Reynolds was the crew chief, and Terry Mullins was the driver, and uh, we raced that car quite a bit. And uh, it blew up every time we ran it. And uh, it'd either drive over the crank, break the crank, window the block, it would do something every time. And uh, it was a motor building lesson from hell, and uh, it was a steep learning curve for sure. And, uh, Went from working for Terry to working for Brad Anderson. A lot of you guys will see uh, BAE on uh, any alcohol funny cars. They build a lot of the alcohol funny car motors, uh, drag boats, stuff like that. So I got to work with some uh, five axis CNC machinery, making cylinder heads, and uh, you know, got to work on the car, stripping the blower, did the right cylinder head, did the clutch. And uh, I got to work with some really talented people got to race people like Frank Manzo and uh, Bob Newberry. You know, those were guys that uh, we were trying to beat on a regular basis. And uh, I was watching the award ceremony for uh, 2013. Looks like Frank Manzo stepping down from alcohol funny car racing. He got a lot of uh, Randy stuff when we went to top fuel racing. And I'm sure he runs a lot of Alan Johnson stuff now, but uh, he's with Alan Abbey, but he's retiring. And uh, I was sort of reflecting back, watching those guys on the stage take trophies. And John Glade, his crew chief, uh, he's another friend of mine. Friend Andrea's too. He uh, gave her a good use in the race trailer one day. She was sitting up on the uh, bench in the trailer and he came in and uh, she was wearing a skirt there. And I guess it was too short. Uh, he gave her a little pat on the butt. Yeah, I'm sure he still remembers that. But, uh, yeah, I see those guys, and I see uh, <clears throat> the things they're doing. And it makes me want to get back into it, but I know I'm not healthy enough to do that. So, right now, it's just YouTube and used cars and uh, Volkswagen Motors. So, things could change, though. You never know. But anyway, thanks for sharing the ride with me. I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off because it's probably like a 20, 30 minute vlog. Way too long, probably nobody's gonna watch it. <coughs> I don't understand the new YouTube and uh, not getting a lot of help from my son. My wife doesn't understand it, the Google Plus thing. I don't know how to get into a circle, put people into a circle if I have to. Uh, resubscribe everybody or what I got to do or any of that stuff. I figured there'd be some people that would make some videos, but uh, no, not, not, not constructive or helpful videos yet that I've seen. Uh, I just, maybe I haven't found one yet. I don't know. Maybe somebody will still uh, is in the process of making one. But anyway, hopefully uh, you guys stick with it. The views hang in there. And uh, yeah, 
you guys keep watching because uh, the interaction is what keeps me pushing the record button. And uh, yeah, so it's been a fun three years, three years, two years, whatever it's been. It's been fun for sure. So, all right, well, we're here at the City of Cars. Looks like the chain's down, the barricade's down, and uh, there's not too many cars out front broke down. I missed that turn, and uh, I'll get the next one. So here we go, it should be a fun day. I'll try to turn the camera back on when I do something constructive. And then this isn't too long, I'll upload this for you. Until then, you guys have a great day. And uh, as Adam says, keep on vlogging.